We have five of our orientation leaders joining us today. Um, these, this group of students, um, I joke sometimes, they're actually called LOLs, which are lead orientation leaders. Um, so these are our leaders within that group. Um, and I'm very excited to get, have them have an opportunity to get to know you and for you to get to know them. So um, without further ado, I want to introduce you to the stars of our show today, our student panel. Um, first up, I'd like to introduce you to Jessica Beck. Um, she's a senior and I'll let Jess introduce herself and a little bit about where she's from and what she's studying. So my name is Jessica Beck. I am a senior criminal justice major from Camden County, Georgia. And a fun fact about me is that corn nuggets are my favorite snack. Thanks, Jess. Um, next, I'd like to introduce you to Isabel Sanchez Barrow. She is another senior um, for us. And um, Is, I'll let you introduce yourself. Hello, um, I'm Isabel and I'm from Madrid, Spain. I'm a senior math major and a fun fact about me is that I'm the only one in my family whose name is not Luis or Pilar. Still great names. Izzy's still a great name. So um, our next student that I'd like to introduce you to is Emily Green and she is a junior. Hi, my name is Emily and I am from Grandview, West Virginia. It's just like 15 minutes from campus, so the complete opposite of Izzy. <laughs> a little bit, a little bit closer. And um, I'm a junior pre-med biology major and um, a fun fact about me is that I love popcorn, like a lot. <laughs> I think I could eat it for like a meal. <laughs> Very good. Um, and next, I'd like to introduce you to Jacoby Harris. Um, he's a senior this year. Hi, my name is Jacoby Harris. I'm from Charleston, West Virginia. I'm a senior mechanical engineering major, and I love real otters a lot. As you can see, he already posted that he loves otters in the chat. So uh, if you know Jacoby, you'll you'll know to love otters as well. I'm sure. And um, Last but definitely not least is Mackenzie Simpson, and she's a senior this year. Hello, my name is Mackenzie Simpson. I am a senior forensic investigation major. I am from Severe, West Virginia, which is about 10, 15 minutes away from campus. And my fun fact is I am one eighth away from being five foot. I told her earlier when we were, we did this, we did a meeting earlier this week, I said, Mackenzie, you could just tell everyone that, you know, you're an eighth of an inch away from being like six foot tall. Nobody would know on Zoom. So uh, welcome to Mackenzie. Um, like I mentioned, we do have some pre-made questions uh, for folks to start answering for you. Um, I, if you have a question, though, please type it in the chat because we definitely want to um, you to get the fullest um, answers that you need for whatever question you have and who better to answer about the experience of tech than people who are um, living it right at the moment so our, our current students um, so first thing i wanted to just jump in and ask um, is you know i know that this is a new, unique situation and we're kind of all fumbling through this together um, but where would I go on campus if I need help with something and I'm not sure where else to go? And um, I wanted to see if Emily would be able to answer that question for us today. Um, personally, as a freshman, when I had questions about classes or I was struggling with something or I was just needing something, a good place to go is the Student Success Center. It's located in the Learning Commons. And um, even if they don't have exactly what you're looking for, they might be able to redirect you to a better place to find what you need. So it's typically a, a pretty good place to go first if you just don't know where to go at all. Very good. Yeah, I think that's great advice, Emily. Um, Student Success Center is probably the folks that you've already interacted with on campus for the first time. Um, I know Amanda's on the call. She's one of our student success advisors. Um, and then there's other folks in that area that you've probably, if you've registered for classes, you've already interacted with. Um, so 
they're, they're really your first line of, of help if you need help. Um, what about how do I get involved on campus? Mr. Involvement, Jacoby Harris, how do we, how do we get involved? <laughs> well, there's multiple ways to get involved. So we always have an involvement fair in the beginning of each semester. So we'll have multiple of our organizations there to, you know, tell you about what the organization is about, as well as, you know, sign you up to get, start getting involved with them. But then we also have bulletin boards posted all around campus that has flyers about events and everything. Then we also give out a weekly digest that tells events that's coming up. And you can always check our academic calendar as well. We have it on there, so. Very good, very good. Um, what about in between classes? What, uh, what, what do you typically do? Izzy, do you wanna take that one? Yep, um, in between classes, I usually go eat lunch at the Dresden or the textbook. But if you don't want to go at lunch, there's also uh, uh, rooms that you can go, commuter lounges, in some of the buildings. And if not, you can just go to the library and hang out with your classmates. Awesome. Um, speaking of, you know, classes, how easy is it to talk to professors? Emily? Um, personally, I've never had any problems with any of my professors, and I have taken like a somewhat wide range of courses, not just biology courses. I have, obviously, you have to have different courses and things. So um, I, you know, have met several professors on campus, and I've never had an issue communicating with any of them. Um, the easiest way to probably get in contact with them is their email, but whenever you go to, uh, whenever you get your um, syllabus for each course, your professor will let you know what method of contact that they prefer because some professors do prefer you just text them and they'll give you their phone number but um not all of them are that way <laughs> but um all professors that i've ever come in contact with are very easy to get along with and um they, they're there to help you as much as you want so hey emily lily's asking in the chat what's the difference between med biology and regular biology I'm muted, sorry. <laughs> so uh, the way it works at Tech is there's not actually a pre-med degree. And I don't know if that's universal or just at Tech, but I know at Tech we don't have a pre-med degree. So if you're going to be pre-med, you've got to be pre-med biology or pre-med chemistry. You can't, you can't just be pre-med. And that same goes for pre-pharmacy, pre-vet, pre-dent. You have to choose like a actual course of study um, to go on. So as far as getting a biology degree, that's what I'll graduate with, is I'll just graduate with a biology degree. But when I started um, in college, I started on what's called the pre-med track, and it just tries to get you to get your courses like chemistry, organic chemistry, things like that. It tries to allow you to take those sooner and um, just get them out of the way because they're obviously more of your, some of your more difficult courses. That way either you have them finished by the time you want to apply to medical school or pharmacy school or whatever. So there, there's really not much of a difference of what degree you're getting or anything, but it just, it adapts more to what you want. Great. Thanks, Emily, um, for sharing that. I know sometimes there is confusion about what what which major you need for what program so um, and who better to ask than somebody in the program at the moment what about um, how large are your classes on campus Jess can you answer that one absolutely so um, your larger classes are going to be the first year classes that a lot of majors have to take and then um, your classes are going to get smaller in size the higher up you get in your major for example, the, my English class was probably around 25 to probably almost 30 students, but my criminal justice classes don't get anywhere near that. I think the highest amount of class or students I've had in a criminal justice class is 17. So the higher up you go and the more involved you get in your major, the smaller the classes could get. Great, thanks Jess. Um, what about, uh, you know, what are some popular organizations on campus? I know we spent a lot of time talking about classes so far. Um, what are, Mackenzie, what are some organizations that students can get involved in on campus? So tech, um, this past year, I know that we had over 40 clubs 
Um, but the main ones that pop in my head is Student Government Association and Student Activities Board, and those are a really good way to get involved on campus. But if there's ever a club that we don't have and you're interested in starting, Michael Sheldon, um, he is in charge of all of the, he helps to get the organizations together and all the programs, and he is located in the bottom of Benetton Center, and then he can help you through the process of trying to get whatever organization club that you'd like to get started. Great, thanks so much. Um, let's see, questions, let me think here. What about um, sports? Is there any, are there any students that are gonna be, and you can just raise your hand in the chat or let us know, um, any students that are gonna be student athletes? Um, Izzy can give us some information about, um, you know, what about athletics? Do students get into games for free? How does that work? Well, students do get for free uh, to any sporting events at Tech. We have uh, different places where you can watch games, so volleyball or wrestling, they play right on campus in Van Meter. And then, for example, basketball plays in the Armory or swim, uh, swims in the Y. But to any of those places, you can get in free with your student ID. Awesome. Um, what about student support? So we know that this has been a challenging time. Um, you know, a lot of us have dealt with a lot of extra stress and sometimes we might need to talk to somebody. Um, Emily, are, is there counseling services available on campus and how do students find out about those and access them? Uh, yes, there are. Um, Mary Hoke, she's actually in the chat, I think. <laughs> uh, she's right there. Uh, she's our, the main counselor on campus. Her office is located on the second floor of the Student Life House, which is, um, it's near Hogan Hall. It's right beside Hogan Hall. And um, that's available to anybody who, you know, feels that they need to talk to somebody or whatever. But we also have emergency counseling that's available 24 seven. So if you call just her office phone number, like it might be her that picks up or it might be somebody else, but it is like an emergency counseling like hotline basically. So you can call that whenever you, you know, feel the need or anything. Great. Um... Is, is there a question in the chat that we need? Yeah, Angie asked, what are the best tools you have found to stay organized in engineering? And I think Jacoby can probably answer that best. <laughs> yeah, Jacob, do you want to take that one? Oh yeah, so what I found is the easiest to stay organized is to make a planner on what you have, because a lot of times when engineering, you'll have multiple assignments due in uh, one week, but it can get almost overwhelming if you don't have it planned out what you need to do. So that's the best way. And then also to stay organized, just talk to your professor about it because a lot of times they can help you on what you need, what steps you need to get to the, each part so you can stay, stay on track and not be overwhelmed. Awesome. And I know we're, we're running a little behind today. Um, just hang with us. We'll, we'll try to get through everything and make sure that you get to your next session too, if you are going to sit in on the residence life session. Um, Jess, I know a lot of students have questions about what do people do on the weekends? Um, so can you talk a little bit about what students um, do on weekends at Tech? Absolutely. So um, as is mentioned, there are sporting events on the weekends uh, at home. So you can go cheer on your fellow Golden Bears at some of those sporting events, or there could be activities going on on the weekend that you can participate in. If you can't find anything that you feel suits you or you don't think that there's anything going on, the good thing about tech is that we are located in wild, wonderful West Virginia. So you could always grab some friends and go on a hike or just go outdoors. So there's tons of things to do on the weekend. Awesome. Um, we also do, um, just to add to that, there are some, Jess is laughing at me because she knows I like to add things. Um, we do offer some free events for students. Um, one, for example, is every, um, the first Saturday of the month is free bowling. Um, there's opportunities like that throughout the semester. So that's a good, good way to check, um, reason to check that weekly digest. So you'll get information about those discounts and opportunities to attend events for free. 
So, um, what about tutoring on campus? I know that um, that's something being a STEM institution, a lot of times people are taking really tough majors. And so, um, Jacoby, do you want to talk a little bit about tutoring? Well, tutoring, you can find it at our, in our Student Success Center. They offer tutoring for a lot of classes and classes that you may not, they may not have, you could always ask them to get that tutoring. But I would also recommend doing tutoring even if you just don't feel like you're failing or anything because the tutoring can help you stay ahead and can really help you in your classes, so. I, I think um, most people end up doing some kind of tutoring at, at WVU Tech. Um, you know, we, we produce great engineers and doctors and um, law enforcement officers and things like that. And you can't do that without having tough programs sometimes. So um, you'll find that most of your top students have either been a tutor or are being tutored <laughs> sometimes. What about um, places to eat on campus? We all sometimes need to, to, to eat. So Mackenzie, do you want to talk a little bit about um, our dining options? Yes, so there are two different options that we have on campus. We have the Bears Den and the Tech Spot. So the Tech Spot is more of a grab and go. They have a lot of desserts, they have sandwiches, and they sell Starbucks coffee there. So there's a lot of people that, um, normally there's a line because so many people need coffee. And then we have the Bears Den, um, and we have a salad bar, we have a sub and pizza station, and then we have a hot bar. So it's a buffet, you go in and sit down. So I'm not exactly sure the cost of it because I live on campus, but I know a lot of people do eat there. Awesome, thanks, Mackenzie. Um, what about, I'll let Mackenzie answer this one too because her and I talked a little bit about this um, a while back. I know a lot of folks are interested in how online classes work since that might be a part of what you experience as a student at um, Tech, especially during this time. So um, Mackenzie, do you want to explain a little bit about how you've um, experienced your online classes? So I'm a forensic investigation major. So some of my courses have been online um, before the pandemic had um, came about, but we use eCampus and eCampus breaks down all of your courses into different links. And normally professors, whenever you click on those classes, they'll have weekly modules. And depending on the professor, some professors might leave all assignments open from um, Monday morning to Sunday night, and then some certain assignments might be due on certain days. So I always recommend with online classes and any classes in general is to write, to get a planner and write down when those due dates are, um, just to make sure that you don't get behind in the online courses because they're just as important as your NC classes. Very good, and you can see they're all shaking their heads. It's very easy to get behind. So um, making sure you, you have those tools to keep you organized is good. Um, let me see. Are there any questions in the chat? Any other questions in the chat before we jump into some other things? I know that um, probably if you're a local student, you've probably heard that sometimes parking is um, a challenge at Tech. And um, I thought, who better to answer that than a current student? So Jess, can you talk a little bit about parking and uh, maybe what's your advice about finding parking spaces on campus? Yeah, so if you show up five minutes before your class, you're not gonna get a front parking spot at the building where your class is. So I would definitely suggest showing up earlier um, and just waiting there or even going into one of the buildings and waiting in the commuter lounges or something because most of the buildings have commuter lounges, so you can wait in there as well. Uh, but the good thing about it is, is that if you do show up five minutes before class and there's a parking spot everywhere, that means not a whole lot of people are attending and nobody wants to go to a school where a whole lot of people aren't attending. So it's a really good thing. See, you love it. The positive spin on not being able to find parking. <laughs> um, you know, one of the things I think that a lot of students have to do, and I know I did this as a student, and I know all of the students on the panel today work on campus in some way. Um, how do you balance working on campus, um, going to school, having a, uh, a personal life? Um, and I, you know, 
like for maybe Jacoby and Emily to talk a little bit about that. But if anybody else has anything to add after they speak, um, definitely want you to, to add that in. Um, Jacoby kind of touched on this a little bit when he was talking about like staying organized, writing things in on a planner, like things like that. Um, I know personally, like I have to write everything down or I forget things like very easily or they'll just slip my mind out and just randomly remember them. But as far as like keeping your personal life and your school life and you know, all that like, um, well organized and stuff is when school is in, I'm not going to lie. Like it is, you know, one of your top priorities or, you know, I hope it would be. So I would try to arrange other things in your life around that. Like not, I'm not saying you can always do that. Of course, emergencies happen and, you know, life happens, things happen and you can't always do that. But if I, if you, if it's, if you can, I would try to make sure your school stuff is written down, it's set in stone, and then try to plan your social life and going to events and hanging out with this person, like try to plan that around your school life instead of the other way around, because I promise you, you will get behind and it, it won't be pretty <laughs> by the time midterms roll around. So uh, that that's my advice on that. And like Jacoby said, just like getting a planner, staying organized, that just kind of goes for life in general, not just college. So. Hey, Candace. Uh huh. This is Peggy. Um, I, w sure. I wanted to say, and I might have missed it. Lily asked about vet school, and I don't know if somebody said it. It's harder to get in vet school than it is in med school. It, it w is. Peck at Beckley has had uh, many. Mm -hmm. And when I say many, three or four each year of the last few years get into very good vet schools. And I just absolutely want to that as encouragement. And I don't mean to repeat what you might have already said. I kind of missed a, a, a few uh, questions, but I wanted to throw that in there that we have an excellent, excellent biology um, um, program and that has served them well to be successful to get into vet schools. You're absolutely right, Peggy. We do have, we have had students get um, into vet school every year, the last few years. Um, it is more competitive than med school. So I would encourage you to connect with your faculty and your biology department early on so that you know um, the, the experiences that you need to have to make sure that you're competitive um, once you are ready to apply to vet school. We also try to work um, to get you opportunities to connect with vet school so that you have an opportunity to work individually with an admissions person to know what their expectations are. The so second part of that, uh, Candace, is the biology club does outstanding yep. work on our campus. They serve not just animals, but they do some great human projects too. Absolutely. Uh, but the biology does a great, great job. Just want to throw that out there. They absolutely do. Absolutely. Um, do any of you have anything to add about balancing life between school and work and um, personal life? Okay. Um, well, why don't we go through and talk a little bit about why we chose tech? Um, you know, I'll let Emily um, and Izzy kind of lead that one. And then um, if, it, if you guys have things that you'd like to jump in and um, add to the conversation, make sure that you, you do that. So I first decided to go to Tech because, well, they gave me the opportunity to play basketball while I study my major. And also it has a really strong academic math major. And well, really all the majors are, have strong programs. So uh, that's mainly why I chose it. Because, like, I didn't know anything about West Virginia when I came, like, I'm from Spain. I barely knew where it was, but, um, I mean, it's been a really good experience. Very good. Um, I'm, like, the complete opposite of Izzy. Like, I've grown up in West Virginia my whole life, and I've, lived, I've literally lived in the same neighborhood, like, my entire life and everything. And, um, personally, uh, I was planning to go to Davie my junior year of high school, and there was like nothing that was going to change my mind. And that was when Davie Tech was partly in Montgomery, partly in Beckley. And then my senior year of high school, um, that was when Davie Tech moved all the way to Beckley. And I came and I toured it, and you know, went through classrooms, talked to professors, things like that. And I, I didn't, I had zero desire to go anywhere else. I really just love campus. I, you know, it's small, but it's not too small. And it's just, it's just a nice place to be. And um, another reason I chose Tech is that they, um, 
they have an affiliation with osteopathic school in Lewisburg, which is where I've always wanted to go to medical school. And um, it's just nice that they have that, like WVU doesn't have that affiliation that WVU Tech does with osteopathic school. So, I mean, it's really just about like what you want, what your goals are and where you want to be. But um, as Candace mentioned though, about like vet school and stuff, like Tech really does try to help you get to the next step, whether that is another like graduate school or medical school or vet school, or if you're just going out to work at that point, like they really truly do try to help you get ready for life, not just give you your degree and get you out the door. It's, it's not really like that. Anybody have anything else to add? Yeah, well, I wanna add like, well, some people are trying to get to vet school or med school. For example, right now I'm, I'm trying to get to grad school. And the good thing about tech, because it is small, the professors really get to know you and your strengths. So they're going to be able to write a better recommendation letter for grad school, med school, med school, or whatever you need. And if you went to a bigger school like WVU, that maybe they don't know you as well as they do in tech. Very good. Um, and I, I'd like for all of the students to answer this question. Um, because I just love to hear their answers. Uh, and I hope that all of you will, will, will appreciate their answers too. But you know, what's your favorite thing about tech? What do you, what do you love about um, going to WVU Tech? Jess, do you wanna start? Yeah, I can start. Um, my absolute favorite thing about tech is that we are a family. We're not just saying that. I went to a 7A high school where I was just student number 623. And at Tech, I'm Jess, so it really means a lot that we have such a connection, like a family connection. And my absolute favorite thing is that, like, we're a family. I knew she was going to steal it, because everybody wants to say that. <laughs> but it, it honestly is, like, that's just how it is on campus. Like, you can go anywhere on campus, and you'll probably, like, eventually, you know, after you've gone there for a little bit, and you'll just see, like, one or two people you know. Like, you may not know every single person, but you're going to know, you know, several people, you know, the more involved you are on campus, or the more events you go to, or, you know, whatever, and it's just, like, like she said, like, it really, it, like, it's not to sound, like, cheesy or anything, but it really is just, like, of one big family. Like, we all just kind of get along, and <laughs> hang out, and <laughs> just do whatever, so, like, it really is how it is on campus. That's kind of how it feels and think. I also want to say, like Jesse said in one of the questions, I love where tech is in Southern West Virginia. Like, I think it's such a good thing that you can just go out on a hike uh, or go whitewater rafting or kayaking or take your friends and go to Summersville Lake uh, one weekend. I absolutely love that about tech too. Um, there's a ton of different reasons why I love tech, but, you know, I love, you know, how Jesse and everybody else has pretty much said the family environment. I know, like, if there's ever anything I need, I can go to my professors, my employers that I've had in the past, friends that I've made on campus, because we really are a family. And once you get to tech and you get to know people and you start going to events, you'll realize how close that we really are. <laughs> Well, of course, the family thing, that's always the, the big thing for me, but also just the involvement that tech has. Tech is not just involved in just what the school's going on, we're really involved in the community and we really want to make that thing. And as you see of us, service is a big thing. So you see us to have many community service events and stuff like that. One piece of advice I always would give to an incoming student is to make sure to get involved um, because, you know, it's not going to be the best experience ever if you just go to class and then go home or go to class and then go to the residence halls. So the more you get involved, the more fun it is and the more you get to meet people and the more you get to do stuff. Like, for example, I have never been in a dunk tank and tech gave me the opportunity to go into a dunk tank. So the more involved you get, the better things are. Um, I, when Jacoby was talking about tutoring, my computer kind of cut out and I didn't know if he had said that it was free <laughs> and I know it's like, like a big deal so uh, I just thought I should let everybody know because I didn't know if he said it or not he may have said it and I just missed it but um I did he think didn't say it was free so you good save Emily <laughs> I thought that was pretty important especially for parents to hear and stuff <laughs> 
Awesome. Well, um, all of the students that are here today um, are in, we have a class of 2024 Facebook group for WVU Tech. If you haven't joined that group, feel free to go search it. It's just WVU Tech class of 2024. Um, add yourself to the group, we'll approve you. And if you have questions, um, feel free to ask them in that um, group. And our students that are here today will respond. And if they can't um, respond, we'll find, uh, they'll let me know and we'll find the answer for you. Um, I really wanna thank um, Jess and Isabel and Mackenzie and Jacoby and Emily today for sharing their experiences with us.